We've all heard the saying, no risk, no reward, but easier said than done. The pandemic is an example of a pure risk no one could control, like a tornado or a flood. Other risks, operational, financial, strategic, they come with big decisions to weigh. Joining me now are marketing connections experts, Jesse Flores of Super Web Pros, Tim Haynes of Symposia Labs, and Paul Schmidt of Unoduce Multimedia. Welcome to the show, guys. Hi, Julie. Thanks for having us. Okay, so I'm looking at a panel of entrepreneurs. Some might say risk takers as business owners. You're also unique because you use your own expertise to grow your businesses as marketing experts. So I think there's a lot that our viewers can really learn from this topic. Tim, let's start with you. Um, how do you take risks safely? I mean, is that even a thing, a safe risk? I don't know about you, but I love to run yellow lights from time to time. I think that risk is inevitably going to be connected with our risk tolerance. So safety sort of depends on your definition of risk tolerance. Great news though, digital has made risk a lot easier to take because we can measure the, the risk and also the reward. So if you've ever wondered, for example, like how does Amazon decide that the color of the button should be yellow instead of blue, that data is driving those sorts of decisions. And something as small as punctuation and a caption could make a very big difference in your marketing efforts. So yes, risk, reward, they are very much connected, but the great news is they're measurable these days. Right. And you're not talking about like huge risk because funny enough, some of us like myself, I don't really consider myself to be a huge risk taker, but when it's a calculated risk and I can measure and see where that risk is going to take me, you know, makes it a little bit easier. Jesse, do you find this to be true? Do you find that people are sometimes intimidated by digital marketing? I think of the businesses that had to pivot during the pandemic. And it seems like this huge world of digital marketing could sound scary or risky? What do you think? Yeah, great question. You know, and I think um, to Tim's point, um, data really helps. Like, look, there are different kinds of risks, right? If I were to close my eyes and go play in the street, like that's definitely really risky behavior and it's a nonsensical risk, right? That's a very different thing than the kind of risk where if I were to wait at the crosswalk for the light to change, right? You know, there's a chance, you know, a car could run the light and I could still get hit, but it's the risk is, de is it's been de-risked because I put boundaries around the risk. And marketing and business in general is no different. If you have boundaries around the risk, then it becomes much easier to know, okay, when the light's green, then I go. Is there a chance that something could go wrong? Absolutely, there's always that chance, but the boundaries help. With digital in particular, um, having access to data and information makes it much easier to bound that risk. Uh, and in some cases, that's actually what intimidates people. So I'll give you an example. I decided to take out a billboard, let's say, to advertise my business. And the guy that sells me the billboard is like, this is great. You know, thousands of people drive by a day. And I feel really good because I know thousands of people drive by every day. And then eventually I hear somebody say, hey, I saw your billboard. And I feel really great because the anecdotes are awesome. In digital, I might run an ad and see that 10,000 people saw this ad in 24 hours and nobody interacted. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, my God. I'm like, this is so risky. What am I doing? Right. But that's actually a benefit and a proof that it works well, because now, you know, instead of spending $3,000 a month on an ad that may work, I know I just spent 50 bucks on an ad and I saw it didn't work. So turn it off and move on to the next thing. And I think that's the real value of digital is learning to think about testing, bounding the risk, and then knowing at the point at which you need to pull the parachute and get off and knowing that, you know what, it's okay to lose a little bit. The lights just changed color. You, you have time to cross. Let's go ahead and move on. Absolutely. Okay. So I love Tim and Jesse, what you've both said about like diving in, taking these risks, but Paul, I'm coming to you next because it seems like taking risks is only one part of this equation. How do you know when to ask for help or when to, you know, seek out perhaps a professional that can help you mine that data to make, you know, decisions about your next steps? When do you seek help? Well, as soon as you can, honestly, it is okay to ask for help. We all know that organizations had to pivot and adapt and incorporate new technologies. Zoom for anybody? Is that Rick <laughs> Can we and put so, that on our resumes now? Yeah, I <laughs> that think a thing? so. Skillset. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things that we have to really think about is the fact that with more Zoom meetings and more um, incorporating 
these new technologies, as, as Jesse mentioned, we have to probably turn to the folks that can help us manage those types of broadcasts, those types of meetings. And not only that, but with the media that's being created, um, instead of tasking somebody that's on your staff that's already overworked at this point in time, using that vendor partnership, those vendor relationships that you've built so that you can you know, use that media that you've captured and be able to repurpose it on the fly and use those skills that you have in house with the, what the vendor can help you provide. So those are the things that people have to really think about because yeah, you're taking a risk in incorporating this new technology or having to incorporate it, but always, always look for help. Always know that these folks uh, that you've built relationships with, relationships with, and that's what they do. Bring them in. You're all part of a ecosystem, all part of a team. Absolutely. We, we hear it often said that we need to know when to stay in our lane um, <laughs> and, and when to bring in those that, um, that have the expertise that will help us with our businesses. Uh, Paul, Jesse, Tim, thank you so much for adding your insights to this today. To see more from our experts, head to WLAJ.com and click the link for Marketing Connections.